Hello everybody, Drake Set from the Battle Bunnies here. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing, assembly and painting guide for Angra. Demon form. So here he is in all his glory. The third Demon Primark to be released by Games Workshop and by far the most dangerous in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So let's get straight into it and unbox this guy. Cellophane off. Out of the way. So it's immediately obvious we have a variant right in the top left corner, closed mouth Angron. Pretty good looking head to be honest. Uh, but I do think the uh, roaring one is probably a bit more suitable for him. So that's probably the way I'm going with it. I wonder if you can do a magnetized version, but nah, don't know if it's something I'll be bothering with. Uh, the skull pile at the bottom looks really good. The sword and axe look brilliant and I love that symbol. Well, the actual World Eater symbol there with all the verdigris in there. That's something which I'm probably going to be trying to do on my kit. So I do like a bit of verdigris where possible. All right, let's get it opened. So, okay, there we go. Now it comes. It'd be really funny if it was a razor back in here or something like that instead, but no. It's like two sprues. Standard 100 millimeter base. Okay, let's put the box to one side. And the knife as well, just in case. Mum wants to start sacrificing their fingers at this point. So, two sprues, and it's definitely just two sprues. That's good. So, I'm gonna put one to the back, and we'll look at this one first. So, what have we got here? There is a big old tail. One of his arms, another one of his arms, some big savage claws, bit of the uh, pipes for I think his neck or one of his arms, uh, I think it's one of his arms where it connects to the shoulder pad, I think this might be some of his butcher's nails on one area, the rest of the tail because it's a two part tail, big old wing, another part of the arm, the guard, his face, and okay, it's a two part face. Where the other part is, it must be under the sprue. And his shoulder pads. Good. Detail is all, yeah, these bits I was concerned about because I was thinking these wouldn't be actually on the uh, wings at this point. I thought there'd be something you'd glue on, but no, apparently they're brave enough to let us deal with them like that. Okay, so that's one of the uh, bits. Let's have a look at the next sprue. All right, what have we got? There's the base, big old slab of slate or something like that. A bunch of skulls piled up. Another bit of stone. And the chest plate with some teeth at the top. And there we have his cowl, which goes above his head. And just above that, we have one of his shoulder pads. There it is. And then after that, more parts of his body, torso, legs. Yada yada yada, and one of his knees. A bit more rock. His back part. His neck right at the top. Uh, you've got some more skulls for the base, and you've got a big old sword with more skulls along it. Because at the end of the day, he needs as many skulls as he possibly can collect. He's never satisfied. Another shoulder pad. And there's his knee, which looks very similar to it. Both of the world eats a symbol. Then after that, just beneath that, we have the van brace for his, I think it's his left arm. And then four half legs, cloven, hooved and all. Yeah, there they are. All right, then further down, we have the rocks again, the big chain axe, the taruges right there, and then the trophy rack here. Brilliant. So let's have a quick look through the instruction manual. Body first, tail, and legs, more legs. Looks like it goes together quite well. Backpack comes on to there. Cover all. Choose your option. You've got the open mouth Angron. 
or the closed mouth ang one and pursue with that. So it shows you how to do both options there. Wings. The spikes at the end of them. That's good. Up there, a few little uh, cables. Which obviously turned a bit veiny and chaosy. Oh, look at that. That's like the front cover of um, is it one of the uh, most recent Horus Heresy books. Is it Saturnine or? Hmm, I'm not sure. Wow. It looks really good just as a grey model. Might not bother painting it. Oh, wow, well, there he is. Just a beast. There's a nice close up of the two face options. Yeah, I think of him roaring is probably more fitting of his character, but I do really like that. If it was any other person, I'd probably go for that. And over there, more pictures of the details. And obviously we've seen the rules on Warhammer Community already. All right, I have to start assembling him. Okay, so here's part nine, cut that off. Nice and easy. Um, not many mold lines or anything along here. Obviously, if you're going to be using a knife, you know the rules, don't cut towards your fingers, even though people always do. Just be careful. All right, that's that done. And then number 10, that's that piece there. So he's looking good on here. Round there. And just round there. Now, world ears were one of the legions which I was going to collect back in the day of the when I first got into Horus Heresy. Me and my um, my brother and a few of my friends all sat around in a circle and we were like, "Oh, look, Horus Heresy is coming out. Isfan three legions are going to be coming out, but none of the uh, top tier ones, or you know, the ones which people really would really like to collect, like the Space Wolves or the I think even Night Lords, Iron Warriors." Yeah, I know some people don't consider them top tier, but so you, everyone's got their own favourites, haven't they, of what they want to collect. And we were all just like, oh, there's nothing which we would have as our prime legion coming out in the first actual release. So we all decided just to get together in a circle, throw all the names into a hat and um, yeah, draw a, a legion out. So in the end, I... I I drew, I drew Death Guard, which is the reason why I've got a Death Guard Legion now. I was actually looking forward to it, well, I actually kind of hoped to get the uh, World Eaters, but not to be, what's going on here? Have I done that wrong? I think I might have. So that's the collar. That goes up like that. That goes there. That was right. Bam. Okay. Joins quite nicely. Give a good squeeze to make sure the fit's nice. Great. I did find it quite disappointing because, you know, straight off the back, you have one Legion with a Primarch, which is obviously Angron. And, uh, yeah, he was a, a, an absolute machine in hand hand combat anyway. And that's wait a little while for, yeah, Mortarion to be released. So I always wanted, I would love to have got World Eaters straight off the bat, but not to be. So... This model here is, uh, he looks exact, well, I believe he looks exactly like what he should do in the Horus Heresy as well. So it might be nice to actually see him with some Horus Heresy rules eventually. I don't know how long it would be until they actually do that. But I can't imagine them making a separate resin Demon Primark model if they've obviously got this on the boards already. Obviously you've got more Tarion, and he's actually seen as the current form in 40k, as in the Heresy as well. And one of those, uh, I think it was Warhawk. There we go, yeah, same model. So this would be 
second Demon Primark which I've actually assembled and hopefully painted. The uh, first one being Mortarian which was featured in White Dwarf which I was very happy with. I painted in pre-heresy colours as well so none of that light green stuff for me. And it's quite good because that means I can actually use him in the uh, in the heresy as well if and when they actually release rules for him in the Siege of Terror. Still haven't finished Callus Typhon though. You know when people buy models and they just put them to the side and never actually get around to painting them? Yeah, that's Callus Typhon and the Grave Warden for me. Could really do with getting back to them soon because my I seem to be fighting people with bigger and bigger armies all the time now. So Callus Typhon leading a good 20 Grave Warden would be really, really cool thing to see. So yeah, hopefully when um hopefully I can get around to them soon. But then again I've started Blood Angel Army and I'm trying to finish uh the custodes as well, which is a very big force of mine. I'm about to start messing around with some red marble effect parts for the uh, nacelles, I think they're referred to as. Never done a red marble effect. I did a green marble effect for the stairs for Mortarian um, back in the day. But yeah, red just looks a bit more difficult. I know some people are using that technique with the, what's it called, um, baby baby wipes. So I've got to try that out. But I've got to find the exact brand which will work well for me. There we go, let's put that together. Oops, there we go. Nice click. Okay. Mm. It's gone together quite well. I might I might finish that off in a few places with filler or liquid green stuff, depending what I feel like. Don't think it's because I um yeah, I haven't left any gates attached to it so yeah but these kits do go together better and better every single year if you're very careful sometimes you can sand it to a point where it actually doesn't need it do it from a certain angle I might have achieved it there mostly actually if you do need it, it's going to be very fine yeah look at that hidden what win Drawing around there. Hopefully, it's staying in focus as well. Bam. Great. And then we glue it based on that point down the bottom there and up the top there. We obviously use Revel as a plastic glue instead of the Games Workshop brand, but apparently, they're good as each other. I wonder if there's anything better. Now that joins nicely like that. Brilliant. It's always worrying because you always think to yourself, if I'm a millimetre off now, it's going to be so far off later. <laughs> but now that seems to be a really nice join. Great. So then I guess we're on to the legs. I will hold him for a few seconds longer. And uh, then put him just to one side over. Yeah, mm. onto the box. All right, then we're on to 13, 14, and 17. So I'll stick the lid back on now. So 13, where are you? Come on down. No, that's all wing related malarkey. And here's the hooves. All right, so 13, 13, 13, 13. I think it's this one here. Yep, that's it. So clip and clip and clip. Oh, and more clips. All right, then after that, 14 and 17. Mm, ah, there it is. The toe. Yeah, 
brilliant. You can't, not really any mold lines. It's really weird. Sometimes you get those kits where they just don't have any flash at all. And then sometimes, yeah, it looks like they've been smeared between them. But I think in later years, it's just been getting better and better from Games Workshop. Like, there's just hardly any mold lines anymore. Until you ink it, then you see the littlest one you've missed. It really sucks. There we go. On top of there. Come on. And then the leg. Now this is going to be one of those difficult things where I'll probably have to do a sand after I uh, yeah, I join these the two legs together. Yeah, I need 15 as well. So So of the three Demon Primarchs so far, I think, I'm not sure which one's my favourite. I think, yeah, they're all they're all really good in their own little regards, but I think detail-wise, I really do like Mortarian. I think it really captures him. Uh, it was fun to paint as well, actually. So hopefully we'll see Snake Boy sometime soon. Or Fulgrim. Uh, I think people would like to see him in Heresy as well. That's 15. That's the one I need. Collect. Maybe. Not far in the future after that. I'll tell you what would be a great curveball saying that. Would be to see them release another Demon Prime art before they release Fulgrim. It's like, ooh. But he didn't expect us to do that. Uh, another demon form one. Uh, I think there's, I think Pachurabo is meant to be sitting there with like a big old armored suit kind of thing where he's got two howitzers, like one arm, like one over each shoulder. Like a crazy Blastoise style character. So that would be really cool to see. Yeah, instead of it just being the, you know, the one which everyone would expect. There we go. Beautiful. So one leg, well, one leg half, and another leg half. Here we go, let's put them together. Okay, if I'm careful, I think some people use brushes, but I'll do a very thin coat along there, like so. Back along here, and around. Now I, let's see if these go together well, and they do. Big old squeeze to smear it in. What I also like to do at this point is walk, have a little look around to see if there's any sort of glue residue which has seeped through. But no, looks like I've done that quite well. Bam. Another big squeeze. And great. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to actually getting this model next to Cabanda in the end. Compare the sizes. And it's actually going to my son, because he's a big World Eater fan. So, this would be a nice surprise for him. Doesn't know about it being here yet. But yeah, it'd be nice to actually get it painted for him and be like, oh yeah, look, here you go. He's 32D6. Anything next to him is going to probably get hurt. There we go. Might get some filler on that bit there. Hmm, so like that we might just put a small amount of this, like that, yeah. Just quickly smear it off so it doesn't affect it too much. Yeah, that should be fine. Yeah, brilliant. Stick that down. Oh, after I do the toe. Dew claw. And... Goes in well. Hmm. Ooh. What's happening here? Ah, there you go. Brilliant. And 18 needs to go on the other side as well. So let's do the pipes first. So I'm hoping to do this guy in grimdark colour schemes. So a lot of oil buffs and uh, 
and lots of weathering at the end, maybe some powders. Had my commander featured on Warhammer Community a little while ago, which was great. There we go. Bam. So yeah, it'd be nice to get this guy featured on there as well. That's what I'm hoping for. So 18. Uh, where are you? 18. There we go. Nice. Well, hopefully that'll slot on nicely onto the body. Oh, here we go. So it shows us just sticking it straight on. I could actually put his kneecap or his knee pad on first though. 16, where are you? Um, there it is. Clippy, clippy doodah. Okay, that's got a little point at the top, so I want to be a bit careful. There you go, nice. And like so. Yeah, otherwise, it'd be great to see a Law Guardian Primark, because I know there's that great story uh, written by Gav Thorpe a little while ago, where Corvus Corax was in the warp as a really awesome uh, shadow Primark. And uh, yeah, Lorgar, well, he's, I think he's hunting Lorgar down, trying to get some revenge. It'd be good to see him. Um, yeah, it'd be good to see Lorgar as a demon Primark as well at some point. It'd be really strange if just one Primark comes back from the Chaos Force, and, you know, just as a standard shape, especially after they've thrown the lot in. Well, it's not standard shape, but standard form, you know, pre chaosy or pre heresy chaosy. There we go. So, top of the knee pad. That goes there. Ooh, is it the other way around? Well, that's strange. According to that, it's that way around. But I would have put it the other way. So, that's definitely not right that way. But that is apparently correct. It fits now. But yeah, according to that as well. Strange. Like the um, gun sights on the Space Wolf bolt guns again. Bam! Yeah, it works. Alright, same with the other knee as well. Alright, so that's that bit done. And I think I'll go straight in and glue it to the body. Give it a bit of time to dry before I start filling the other one. Everyone hates it when you start gluing things together and suddenly, just like that, pop. Oh no, that limb or that thing I glued on ages ago has just been knocked by my clumsiness. I think that goes there. I'm sure dry fit first, but oh wow, that was an absolute joy. Nice. Brr. It's getting bigger. I'll have to get my Angron down from the cupboard upstairs in a while and compare sizes next to this guy. So we go on to the other leg. Uh, I've just clipped off 20 and 22. There we go. Sanded them down slightly as well. And they're looking very nice. There we go, a bit more revel glue. Let's get this bit together nice and quick. And there we go. Wipe off the excess, and it's all good there. Now on the 25, 26, and 21. 25, where are you? Oh, there's 26. There we go, 25, and 21. Yeah, I do think do you think they'll be bringing each one of these Primarchs back? I also get the feeling, I know it might sound a bit cheap and odd, but I can imagine them bringing back all the Loyalist Primarchs and it's almost like a strange Marvel style superhero lineup where you've got the Shadow Primarch, which obviously is um, Corvus Corax, and turn into a puddle. I think Ferris Manus will come back as basically pretty much the Iron Man. Not as Iron Man, but you know, he's the Iron Man. Where he's given a chassis of pure adamantium, which is spirit. 
controls. Could bring him back as a clone, but still I think it'd be pretty cool to see him come back as a big old robot Primark. And after that, you've got Ducati Khan. I think with the, I think with Ducati Khan, there was that there were mentions in one of the Primark books where they said, uh, yeah, oh, who was it? Magnus the Red, that's it. Magnus the Red said to him, yeah, you've got the same power inside me. You just haven't used it. Well, you've got the same power inside you, but you just got to learn to use it or something along those lines. So I've got the feeling that he will be the the loyalist um, Psyker Primarch in the far future. And I reckon that's where he's gone on the quest into the Maelstrom, just trying to, well, maybe perfect his art or try to unlock his talents. He'll come back and be a yeah, really strong psychic Primarch. And after that, we've got Lehman Russ. We know he's basically running around in the uh, in the warp naked because he took his armor off. Didn't need it anymore. Is that a sign that he's a wolfen now or what? But I personally would say they should do it so that when they do bring him back, which I'm sure they will, he he's control. Yeah, he's got control over his uh, floor. The Canis. And Halix. And he can actually transform into a wolf as and when he wants, or a wolfen as and when he wants, and transform back. Yeah, because that flux already happened with uh, Bran Redmore. So it'd be really good for him to be able to just switch back, yeah, back and forward between forms. Wolfen form. Primark form. And, uh, yeah. It'd be quite good to see two models in the actual box so you can actually flip between them inside the game. I think that'd be a really good option. Cause it'll keep both people happy as well, because if he turned into a wolf, and I think it'll, it would upset quite a lot of people in the community. But then if he didn't have the ability to do it, uh, it, it, it just keeps everyone happy. So if you don't want to turn into a wolf, and don't turn into a wolf. And keep him as regular Odin-like. Lehman Russ. Right, then I need part 24. That's a horn for the knee. Oh, that's a small little horn. Where are we? That's 34. Don't think it's on that sprue. Vulcan coming back would be amazing, but I don't even think he's dead anyway, so I'm not sure what he'd come back as. Uh, or what sort of form he'd come back as anyway. Hmm, I'm going to struggle to find part 24 now. Ah, there it is. Right, bottom corner. Ding. Rebecca Gilliman's got his nice little suit at the moment. So he's one of the one of the team. Obviously he's a great leader and hopefully Yeah, he he's pretty much almost taking the role of a Captain America style character. Uh, which is alright. Don't know if they'd actually need to release another model of him after he's obviously taken his suit off and started yeah, running around in his, well not his old gear, but he can take that suit on and off now, which is good. There we go. Very nice, look at that. Okay, then straight on to this leg. So I'm going to put a bit of glue around here. No. And hopefully this fits straight in. Oh, not that, but it's fine. And I think it goes straight in there nice and easy. And wow, very nice. Let's force it in a bit more. Yeah, beautiful. Wow. Look at that pose. 
really have them leaning into it. There's a proper forward run there. Oh, yeah, proper forward run. I understand why he needs his tail now, he's running forward that much. All right, let's put that to one side and get on to the next page. We have parts 28 and 27, which is, hmm, is it worth putting them bits on now? 28 and 27, they're the dangly chains on the side. I might choose to not put them on at the moment because I think there's a few techniques I will be using that I think they might get in the way of. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep 28 and 27 on the spree for now. And I don't believe, I don't believe they're going to get in the way. Or there'll be things in the way which will stop me from putting it on later. So, yeah, I'm going to take the option not to do it. Oh, actually, going back to the previous page, 19 needs to go on as well. Now, is that another thing which I think I should do later? No, I'll put that one on now. Worst comes to worst, you can learn from my mistakes. And I can let you know if I regret it. Ah, there we are, big old 19. Um, yeah, uh, obviously then you've got Sanguinius. Sang Sanguinius, I believe, the law might have changed on a bit, to be honest. So if I'm wrong, then I am really sorry. But as far as I was aware, he was basically in a coffin. Um, to me, that just screams... He's going to be coming back at some point, considering they're meant to be, you know, kind of vampiric. So, love to see him come back in the future. But yeah, he'll have some great powers as it is straight away. Obviously, he looks like an angel already, so he doesn't really need any other mutations or gimmicks. He's an angel primark. And come on, he is, he is sanguineous at the end of the day. There is no way they're going to be bringing back other Primarchs and not bring back, you know, Sanguinius. There we go. I don't mind it actually, considering all the uh, the tweaks of lore and the abilities of like spirit, well, spirits coming back. Uh, I don't mind the thought of them actually bringing back every Primarch. I'm not going to be resentful for it. I think it'd be a really good thing actually. It's just more great models to paint and, you know, fight. Uh, Ferris Manus was one, like he's one of the best Primarchs there was, and unfortunately, due to some Isfan five shenanigans, he got taken away way too soon. So I do feel a bit sorry for um, uh, yeah Iron Hands players in that regard. But I do still think that they should get the ability to have him back in the future. Hmm. Okay. That. May be. Oh, do I have to? Oh, no, 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 it clips in nicely. Hasn't knocked it out of place. No. Yeah, that clipped in really well. Really well, actually. It's like it just took it off my hands. Wow. So, as mentioned, 30 and, well, 27 and 28. 27 28 are going to be left on the sprue for now and 30 and 29 are going to be assembled and stuck onto his back now the wings themselves i'm probably going to end up doing a uh, blue tacky thing where i don't glue them on until a bit later as well but we'll see when we get that in a few minutes might assemble them separately it's nice when they sometimes have those little uh instructions on the actual uh, guys which say do not glue, oh, paint first before gluing and things like these models you, you don't want to rush them at all because they're the character ones the centerpieces of your army and uh this guy's definitely a centerpiece isn't he number 29 i've seen that piece oh it's on the other one right down at the bottom there it is nice and small Pop. so there's the knife a little bit there. Done. So 
So the World Eater release as well. I wouldn't mind actually seeing them actually them release a yeah, well, the Devourers or even what are the name of the other guys, the Red Butchers. Great to see them as a plastic kit. So they did the same thing with the Grave Warden and the like. Yeah, that would be really cool. So I do like some Terminators, especially ones which are slathering at the mouth. And the Red Butchers are just great Marines. You know, anything wielding a double chain axe, well not double chain axe, double chain fist running towards you is just terrifying. And the helmets look great as well. I think they were some of the best looking Space Marine helmets. There you go, almost kind of Grey Knight-esque. That's nice, there we go, around there. Yeah, not really any mould lines here at all. Just doing a cursory scrape just in case. That's where the grip was. Bam, gone. All right, and this bit goes together. So that will be sitting in, well, it goes in really well, so I know exactly where it goes. Pop, just like so. Um, who else? What other Primarchs are there? On the Loyalist side, you've got Rogel Dawn. Now he, off the top of my head as well, he was killed in some sort of boarding action where, um, yeah, there's hordes of, hordes of uh, infantry which ended up dragging him down and killing him. Slots on nicely. I think that was in uh, one of Conrad Kurz's visions as well. Prince of Crows. There we go. Look at that. And all they found was his hand. So he's not technically dead, considering. All right. There we go. That is part number 31. So, yeah, I haven't read all of the... Um, 40k stories have been a bit behind so I was concentrating fully on the, um, the Horus Heresy series and also being a dad which is obviously time consuming in itself so if I'm wrong or if I've missed anything yeah please no, you could say feel, yeah feel free to comment I'll happily read it or tell me books to read to actually get further answers that's that's where I want to go obviously yeah the Horus Heresy is winding down now isn't it with the stories anyway. I think it's three more books left at this point. Or two. Not sure which. But very happy, especially as hopefully Pandemonium is going to be coming out as well at some point in the near future. And if you've had the chance to read the Beckwin stories, then uh, you'll understand why it's so important and such a great, great series. Oh, that goes on nicely. And hopefully it ties in with a few things. And I reckon there's going to be quite a lot of bits which are tying in from the late Horus Heresy series into the um, Eisenhorn and Ravenna books. Oh, from the Beckwin books. So that goes on nicely. Big squeeze. Not really a gap there, which is good. And around the back's fine as well. One more squeeze. Oh. And boom. And grub. Or is, you know, torso and legs at least. Okay, so we've got the choice now of going to 32. 32 or, yeah, with 33 or with... 36, and of course you can still have the tongue behind the mouth, so you can still see it slightly, but I think I'm going to go straight for the roaring one. Yeah, my commander had the alternative uh, head option, which is one of the, the helmet or the face guard, just because I hadn't seen anyone else do it, and I thought, ah, why not? And it looks really good, it's got a really nice Spartan split helmet. All right, so I need 34 and 33, and I don't think they're on that one, so I'll put that to one side. Where's 34? Uh, there's 33, so I'll grab that whilst I can. 
a nice little clip there. Well, this is, oh, that's very thin. Don't like that. And coming over the top. I don't know why I'm whispering, and I need number 34, not 37. So the 34 tongue. Da -da -da. Ooh, it's not on this one. Maybe it's on this one then. Or maybe it was on the other one. Oh no, there it is. 34. Spin it around. Excellent. So the first thing I have to do is put this into 33. So that's 33. So let's get this sanded down. Make sure there's no extra bits there. Lovely. How about this side? Ooh, let's get out in the corner. Excellent. Hopefully you're not going to lose too much detail on the ribbing. No, that looks good. Excellent. Nice little scan. Oh, skim there. And then onto this little bit. Hmm, probably should use that in this case. And then a little one there. Great. All right, so we need to stick that tongue in this mouth. So that's top and that's the bottom. It goes in like that. No, that's strange. Oh no, it doesn't go in like that, it goes there. Ah, it fits in really well. In fact, I'm worried it's not gonna come out now. Come on, <laughs> put your tongue out, Angra. There we go, and a bit of glue there, and a bit of glue there. Tongue goes in. So I do a bit of 3D modeling myself in my current work, well, at work. So I always get quite intrigued when they're when I see things like this, because the guy must have to literally use a slicing tool to slice the bits up and then just stick them on the sprue. And I think that'd be quite a fun thing to do and frame them all, because I'm sure it's not as simple as um, automatically stick this to that or yes, yeah, immediately assign this sprue part here to this exact slot. He must, he, yeah, the, the talented designer must be going, that needs to go exactly there and have this bit around here, this here. And I know sometimes you see, uh, from time to time, little, little areas where it looks like they they carefully set up a a possible gate, but they've decided not to go the entire way with it. Um, like I think in this instance, like that one there. So it was like stop there, and they were like, well, we'll put it like that just in case. And if we do have problems with the, what's the word for it? Um, the the mold itself we can easily quickly drill from that point there to here to make it pass through nice and like nice and safely because otherwise if they had to just drill it out not say by hand but with a well if they had to drill it out later it could be quite a troublesome thing so a nice simple one like that could be quite easy to you know block in, yeah block in in the future or hack in in the future all right, so now on to part number 
32, which is the top of his head slash his eyes. I think it's one of those things I'd always want to do as well, is go around the actual studio and design area and see how they make it all and how it all goes together. And actually meet the guy who actually makes all these, or guy or girl, who um, does all these, yeah, the, the breakdown of pieces and... how it goes onto a sprue like this. Also, I'm wondering whether it is actually the same person who designs the model in the first place. Or do you reckon there's a specialist guy who's actually like the, or girl, person, who is, um, who yeah, takes the actual model itself and breaks it down into pieces and then sticks it in onto the sprue. Yeah, do they work together and choose how to do it or what? questions to ask and I hopefully yeah hopefully I can speak to someone who's designed them at the next world fest and say oh yeah you did this and he can go yeah or she can go yeah and then have a lovely chat about how they do it all how the sprues are actually designed I think it's like the worst thing about covid actually well one of the worst things about covid apart from the obviously global pandemic and death of loved ones and stuff but I think one of the worst things is actually missing out on all these great events which we used to have and go to like uh the horror service weekenders and um which other ones yeah warhammer fest open days even the ones just straight after christmas these were great great events and really nice to catch up with all the designers and artists painters so nice to see them Picking up again, we're going to be heading down to the, you know, to the next one, and well, up to the one in Manchester soon, and that's going to be great fun. There we go. Okay. Let's see if I can get a bit of that glue away. No, that shouldn't be an issue. Well, on that side though, because I think it pulled up a bit there. Nah, that's fine now. Okay, I think I probably should have glued that on after. Is that right or not? No, that's fine. Wow, look at that slot. <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah, so hopefully I'll ask all those questions and uh, chat to them. See what they say and how they actually do it all. Just need to grab a little bit of glue from there, from there. And then hopefully, bam, straight in. Those cables are hanging out that side, and I think they are actually detached from the model and they're hanging in the air or flapping in the air. There we go, yeah, that's right. Urgh, beast. Look at that. Nice. All right, so that's this stage done. Then we've got 39 and 35, which I believe are on this sprue. Yeah, so you have to use 39 and 35 if you do that one, otherwise you've got to use 39 and 38. So I found 38, one I don't need. So hopefully the other ones are on here. I'm also looking forward to seeing what scenery they're designing next as well. Great to see some sort of hab unit, maybe. Not just like a Necromunda one, because they're great anyway, but a standard one, which is not as gothic -y as um, all of the... Oh, there we go. Uh, not as gothic -y as all the uh, other terrain systems they've got, but something which is just a bit more, you know, let's, let's get people living in a house instead of have a billion and one gothic architectures like references or skulls adorning every single surface. Oop, knocked that. There we go. Yeah, I really like the old uh, Sector, Sector Imperialis terrain they used to do. That was uh, really great. I had quite a lot of that, I still do. All goes really well with the uh, Forge Rolls Cityscape, which is still up in my loft. Should get out from time to time. Got to do some more work to it soon. Add some rubble piles to it. I think that would look great. 
So I do like a bit of realism and all that extra bit of, uh, yeah, all those little extra rubble piles and stuff around the ruins themselves just adds that extra bit of detail. So yeah, I think they can get away with just not going mad with the gothic style and just release, yeah, release something which can easily be sort of stacked up on top of each other for um, yeah, a great terrain purpose. Uh, make some giant skyscrapers. Who doesn't want that? Okay, so this one. So we start off with 39. There it is. Mm. Does that go that way around? Or does it go that way around? Ah, oh, it's definitely that way around. Fits nicely already, so let's go straight into it. And I think there's a few slots along the back, but I think I might put a bit of glue there and there to make sure they actually sit in properly. Because I don't know where they're going to, I'm guessing it's those slots there, but let's see. Yeah, look at that. Another perfect join. And then these bits, they go... They go into his chest or not? No, up into those spots in the top. So that's a little bit there, there, there. Oh, don't like that. How am I going to get that off? Okay, that's better. Probably should have actually put the glue onto the actual um, wires instead in that instance. Right, let's see if I can get this in. Nope, it's falling off. Curses. I'm going to use reverse jointed tweezers to hand, so I'm going to be careful with my clippers instead. And put them in nicely. Like a glove. There we go. Angry Ron. And I believe that's this part complete. Obviously, apart from the hanging chains on, apart from the hanging chains on the side, which I'll be adding later after I've done all the paintings. So I'm going to grow some nice brass armor there. I don't want to make it really dirty and grimy and I think oil buffing with the chains in the way might be a problem. Okay, so I'm gonna put this whole part here to the side for now and start on the wings. All right, that's a lot of parts for some wings. Okay, so I need 42 first. Where are you? There's 42, no, it's 48. There's 42, there's 42. So let's get that bit off. And after that, I'll be needing 41, which is one of the big wings. And 40. So 40 is there. If I come at it at a nice angle, probably need to do less trimming. Like so. A lot, it has really a lot of claws. I will actually say at this point, the worst bit for this model for me is these bits here. I'm not a massive fan of them. Oh, no, those bits, I just think the detail on it looks okay, but I think I don't know, there's something just a bit, bit off about them. Doesn't take too much away from the model, but it's the only bit here. Yeah. That's, that I'm not 100% sure about. I don't even know if there's anything you could do to actually change it either. Um, could add a bit of green stuff and thin it out a bit. But otherwise, that's what it's designed to look like. There we go. Be interested to see what this guy's wingspan is like compared to Commander as well. Because Cabanda's just huge. 
each one of those wings can sort of hold an avatar of Kane or cup one. You can use a wing as a as a uh, sleeping bag. There we go, around there, up there, across there. Ooh, let's see if I can get that better. There you go, smoother. Like that. Yeah, well, if they're releasing um, uh, World Eaters this edition, it'd be really nice to see if they release uh, Fulgrim next edition. I think they had, had more Tarion and the Death Guard last edition, 8th edition. Some of the core box set parts. Obviously, ninth edition saw Angron towards the end. Brilliant. I do sometimes think you can only really get certain bits done with a really nice exacto knife like this. Quicker and easier. All right, I'm going to be trimming these bits for a fair old while now, I think. So, yeah, the wing next. So, first off, I believe I can glue these two together before I can do the wing. So, let's see if that works. Doesn't say you shouldn't, so let's give it a go. Um, oh, that bit's different, so. to remember that's not married up together very well I wonder if there's something there that I forgot to cut maybe see what I will do I'll put a bit of glue on the inside and hopefully that will Hide it. Pinch, pinch. That's better. And that's fine. I think I'll have a go with that knife technique along these bits. There we go. Nice merge. I think just up there as well. Let's move that bit out. And done. Just right. Yep, I think that's good enough for me. I'm going to get some of that glue off now because I don't want to uh, ruin it. All right. Then on to the big 41. So that is... Which wing? That wing. All the numbers are correct so far on this one, which is good. And nothing's accidentally be mirrored or anything like that. Ooh, yeah, that's going to be a difficult one. That's why I thought they were going to come separately. And 
on top of that one there. And that one. No, no, and another one over there. Which I missed. There we go, let's get that one done. I'm well, I'm not too sure whether I'll do this as a uh, see, sorry, a um, an assembly video and then do the painting video separately or what because I know some people aren't interested in pure assembly. I think some people say it's the worst part of the hobby, which is really strange because it is actually my favorite part of the hobby. So I'd happily do this all day long compared to painting. Yes, I always find it strange when I meet people who actually enjoy painting. <laughs> I do like gaming, but I think my favorite part of the hobby is the collecting side of things. I like looking into a cupboard full of models. Definitely, they have to be painted because yeah, it's just a bit sad if they're just sitting there gray. Yeah, no, a nice painted army on a battlefield is just the best. It's not like I won't paint. Yeah, I always play people who have got unpainted armies. Got no problem with that either. But I do think a nice painted army just just completes it, especially when you've got a full painted battlefield as well. And at the moment, I think I've got. Three battlefields. I've got the desert one you see a lot of. I mentioned it a while ago. I've got the Forge World Cityscape, which is just brilliant. It's a lovely kit. Oh, lovely out of production kit now. And I've got the, yeah, what else, what else have I got? I've got a, the Resin Zone Mortalis, which I'm pretty much finished. The only thing I've got left to do on it is oil. Um, which I've decided to do later, or most recently, is an oil buff. So I've got to go over the entire thing again and uh, just add a bit of extra weathering to it and maybe some extra powders. And I think I might change the... I think, oh dear me, I might actually change the uh, floor panels as well to a different colour because I do prefer a bit of a beigey concrete after well, my initial Codex Grey or Mechanicum Grey choice because I think sometimes people just want to go different from what they present or show in the books or on their websites and that's what happened to me and I was just like oh no I'll, I'll try something different and then after you look at it and go yeah I understand why they didn't do it that way okay so that is not going on it clearly is meant to so, I believe that's technically me making a mistake. I wonder if I can just push it on. Oh, come on. Okay. All right, let's see if I can force it in first so you can learn. See if that's a viable option. Oh. Yay, it is. It clips. So if that happens to you, you know you can just clip it in. And what I'm going to do is feed a bit of glue into that gap. Let it do its stuff. Bit of glue into there. Pinch it a bit. Pinch it together. Let it do its stuff and then wipe off the residue before it does any sort of damage which is successful. So yes, this scene here, assemble them together over the wing. 
at the top. I've got that bit there, which I could do with getting some glue in. What was that noise? Something clicked. It's been one of the skulls, isn't it? This is where it all goes slightly wrong. <laughs> there you go, that works. And there is no seam. There's no glue residue there. Apart from the most basic part of it, that's pinched nicely. And that's now tight. That point there. Pull that bit, bit together. I think that works. A very small, very small groove there, but I don't think it's worth even looking at, to be honest. No, that's fine. That's fine there as well. Now, I might do tactical trim here. <laughs> it's just me being lazy at this point, not wanting to use green stuff, but I'm sure it'll be all right. Yeah, that's fine. So there's one wing. And no residue there. That's got a nice join as well. Yep, can't fault that. But at least I've learnt from the next one and hopefully you guys have learnt from my mistake, which is good. They need to come over the wing. Wing first, then they pinch on top of it. 43, 44, 45 and 46. These are very similar to Cabanda's. Hopefully they're in a nice row, 43, 44, 45, and 46. Well, well done. Now, I am concerned that I'm going to do one and then accidentally get them out of sequence. So what I'm going to do is go straight into it. So now the numbers on the Cabanda ones weren't that clear. Uh, you couldn't exactly work out which ones were meant to go into which slot, which caused me a lot of a headache and I had to weird process of elimination where I went from one to another just going does that go here no does that go here yes but it can also go there I know I'll uh and uh, yes yeah, so I almost had to start writing things down to actually work out exactly which one it should go into there we go so that's a nice join so you've got a bit of residue there which I'm getting rid of and on the other side Beautiful. And I fast forwarded a bit just to get them all on. They fit really nicely. Look at that. Okay, so on to the other wing. And it is also the second evening I'm on this now. So, which bits do I need? I need 48 and 50. So, 56. No, 50. No, different pieces. There you go, there's 48. Bam. So yeah, good news today. I've seen the, um, the new jet bikes for Horus Heresy as well. Absolutely brilliant. We saw them obviously teased as a shadow a little while ago, but they finally confirmed that they're going to be Mark VI, which is 
definitely the right way to go in my opinion. It'd be really nice if they actually had the option for Mark II in there. <clears throat> Who knows, they might still do, but I can't imagine it. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be really awesome. Really, really cool. So I've never had any before, because obviously as I collected Death Guard, they didn't really, it doesn't really go with their, their methodology or their way of war. So I was more of a, let's have some extra heavy support squads and let's have some um, the other things. Uh, yeah, Vindicators, plenty and plenty of Vindicators. Anything which is mid-range, deadly, is the way to go. But with my new Blood Angel army on the go, I think a fair few of those guys would be just brilliant. Definitely the right option. Also, one thing I noticed a little while ago is they started doing um, yeah, White Dwarf articles with the vehicle that's just come out the previous month. So I found that quite interesting. And they've also got some... Um, missions which are made to include those vehicles so there's that predator one which is a bit of an ambush one, um, set of missions which look really good not had a good chance to play it actually because i'm more of a fan of um sicarans than predators but i might convince myself to uh go through all those missions as well I might try film them for a battle report that'd be quite fun all right but yeah it'd be really good to see um, hopefully, a month or two's time, a bunch of missions with scimitar jet bikes, two or three squadrons of them, and how to best use them on like raids. That would be great. So yeah, I, th I hope they continue with that. Also, I love seeing all the Necromunda missions they've got in there as well at the moment. There we go. I think we're mostly there now. Hopefully I don't make the same mistakes as I did last time with the other wing. But we're learning. So yeah, I think uh get a fair few of those when they come out. A nice flight full of scimitar jet bikes. I never liked the £25 price tag per per unit either. I thought it was a bit too steep. So, plastic ones are just a massive, massive godsend. But the White Scar players out there are just ecstatic as well. Don't think they can get happier right now. <laughs> Hopefully after this, so it's quite nice. You always notice what's going to come next. They remove it from the four drive web store and you're like, oh, that's gone. Yay. It's a nice teaser that is. So hopefully we'll see something like um, uh, javelins disappearing soon as well. That'd be great. Have them reappear. Nice plastic format. Still can't believe I haven't got assault marines though. That's what we need very soon. Uh, I think that's everything tidied up. So let's get straight into the gluing. Okay, so it says, there's the wing. It says to draw a bit of yellow, well, not yellow, a bit of glue along here. Get rid of some of that. Okay. And then that can come straight into, oh, where am I going? There. Like so. Oh, that's a lovely fit. Look at that. And then slap this one on top. So, hmm, 
reminds me slightly of the same character, well, that character. I think it's the Vicross in um, Curse City with its wings and fluffy bits. Yep, that's melded nicely. So I'm gonna put that onto one side as well. And then once again, let's get some more of these uh, claw tips out. Hopefully they're in the same order again. And what I'll do is I'll quickly knock these out and then rejoin the filming. All trimmed now. And so here we go. Let's put some glue on here. One after another, one, two, three. I'm putting a little bit extra glue on these so that when I push them down, Hopefully, uh, it should come out the side slightly. Now I can do a quick wipe. So I'll do that one. That one there. Oh, wrong way around. Rookie error. That one there. And that one there. Push them down nicely. Mm. Yeah, I'm just being lazy. I don't want to get the uh, green stuff out at the moment, or liquid green stuff, but such a small joint, it should be okay. Then a quick wipe. Wipe. And there we go, a lovely join on each one of them. Brilliant. So that goes to the side. So I've got both wings complete now. So I'm on to the next part. I could glue them on at this point and I'll show you what it looks like. So which one is the one I just did? It's not this one. Good. See, this one merges on really nicely here. So you stick it in just there, and it, you can feel the place where it's meant to sit exactly. In fact, you can see that little dot there. It goes just behind that one there, and bam. So it works, it gets in nice and snug. Finger keeps knocking that, unfortunately. I feel that's not gonna make it to the end. Okay, so I could glue that on at this stage, but then might not have access to all that very well. Or well, I could keep it separate and glue it on right near the end, for the last stages of the painting. And I think that's something I might do. And back onto this side. Where does that go? Oh, careful of the uh, claws. There we go. So that goes in there. Merges in nicely as well, you can see. Over the top, underneath. So, and as before, I think it might be better for me to paint that separately and just glue it on at the end. Might, I could do it with super glue towards the end. Do a bit of, yeah, small little touch ups. And I, yeah, it's got to be the best option for this guy at this stage anyway. All right, so the next bit, there's more cables, 55 and 47. Now they are underneath here. Now they're nice and easy to put on later as well. So I think I will, I'll, del I'll delay that. And then onto the arm and chain axe. So I need 57, which is obviously this part. And yes, it's numbered the right thing. And to here. I also need 56 and 59, not 58 at the moment. Let's come over the top for that one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to comparing this to uh, Cabanda's big old chain axe. Don't know if it's the same. Well, it's kind of the same aesthetic. Yeah, Cabanda's have got two or three rows of teeth, though. Makes it a bit more rippy. And what's going off? Why is it stuck? Oh, that's that one 
just there again. It's a bit of a difficult one to get to. I think I'll chip, I'll cut that off with a knife. And then 56 and 59 aren't on that one. They're on the other one. Really getting through this now. So that's 56. As you can see, there's not really many more bits left on the sprue. So I think at some point tonight I'll be painting it. I'm not sure what I'm going to start off with. I, I am planning on doing some airbrushing. Um, if you've not got an airbrush or haven't used an airbrush before, they're very easy to get on with and to start off with as well. So I recommend, I'll show you mine when I get downstairs and get to the painting. And uh, give a quick rundown of, oh, I almost knifed myself. Um, yeah, give a quick rundown of the actual equipment, how much I paid for it, which is in the region of £100 from Amazon. And it's lasted me about uh, 10 years now. So the compressor's gone really well. Apparently you meant to have them serviced regularly. I haven't had mine serviced. Well, not regularly, sorry, but you meant to have them inspected or maintained every now and again. So at some point, I think I'm, I might replace it and get a new one which will last another 10 years. I don't even know where to go to to get a uh, compressor maintained though. But yeah, the, the standard little £10 airbrushes, they are good. I, I did go through a stage where I was almost using them as disposable. Um, so for some reason, after a while, eventually they start rusting, no matter how well you try to take care of them they start yeah they start getting a bit tired so i had some bad luck with some other branded ones which maybe it wasn't great so i kept going back to the old 10 pound or 12 pound disposable jobs so there's so many of them kicking around in the um in the garage and uh yeah i'll just buy one every other i think once every two months and then I started taking a bit more interest in actually maintaining them and getting a bit more aftercare products, including some decent scrubbing brushes. And I actually found out you could take the nozzle off at the end. Not the two little silver ones, but there's a, um, there's a very small little bit and there's a little spanner for it. And I was like, oh. I just kept thinking to myself, why do they always give me this little spanner? Turns out it's because you could take the little nib off at the end and really start scraping it down. And ever since then, I've not had a... I've never had to replace an airbrush. So it was down to, yeah, ignorance of uh, airbrushes. So I think eventually in the next few years I will make the effort to get a actual proper decent airbrush. So I did actually have an Infinity which ended up perishing, which I was very upset about. But yeah, that's down to one thing again, which was lack of training and knowledge about a piece of equipment. Yeah. So yeah, um, I am planning on using an airbrush on these, on this guy. I did on Cabanda. It was a few layers of scale seven, scale seventy five, scale seventy three. Um, different colours. I'll show you the ones I used for Cabanda in a while. And then after that, it went to uh, I think a very light dry brush of reds to or well, higher reds to actually get the. Um, Definition around the little cracks in his skin. And then I uh, covered it in an oil buff. And yeah, went from there. But I really do like oil buffs and they are very nice and easy to use. Makes everything a little more grim dark as well. Also tried for the first time uh, object source lighting for Cabanda. His helmet, he ended up getting a yeah, some well, for his face mask, not helmet. I wanted to have some glowing eyes from inside the hood, not hood, helm. And uh, yeah, I used a really nice orange, it was great. Once again, if you're bored of me waffling, please fast forward to the painting or watch the painting video instead. But if you're interested, still. And assembling this lovely little kit. Yeah, please just keep listening. 
I'm sure I'll start chatting about something else random soon. <laughs> yeah, it was really great to hear, well, not gonna spoil anything actually. The, uh, I think two of the last, well, Echoes of Eternity was a fantastic book for World Eaters, or with World Eaters. And obviously Sanguinius, who's on the front cover. Keep looking at that Horus model, which has just come out, and wondering if they'd planned that as a bit of a dual kind of model with the Emperor. But obviously, it's an amount of skulls, so I don't know at the moment. It'd be great to see the Emperor eventually. And setting Horus at a thousand points does mean you can get you know, the Emperor up to that sort of price tag as well in points, and that'd be great. Obviously, every single custode person out there is like, My time will come. But we do have Constantine Valdor as a Primarch now, and that is just excellent. I was listening about the Thunder Warrior Primarch earlier in um, one of the most recent stories. What one was it? Ah, yeah, the Valdor story. I think his name's Ushatan. That was a great story as well. Anything like Chris Wraith is pretty strong saying that. I wonder if we'll ever see them again. I know at the end of one of the books there was uh, murmurings about them. Uh, what was it? Uh, Outcast Dead. That was it. It's an interesting story that one was. I think I can talk about that one without any spoilers considering it's been, um, it's been around for years. If you've got problems with that then I am sorry. But yeah, right at the end of that, uh, you've got some strong hints towards rebuilding of some Thunder Warriors. Makes you wonder whether they might turn up in one of the last books. Which could be a good surprise, to be honest. Alright, I think that axe is now well and truly taken care of. Around there. Don't think I need to sand them down. Knuckles, there's nothing obvious there. But worse comes to worse, I'm gonna dry brush that up. <laughs> okay, do I glue to that, that to that now? No, it looks like I can do. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Oh no, got to trim the other bits first. Oh, I've done that one already. What about this one? Did I do this one? Yeah, I did both of them. Right, straight to it then. And that goes like that. Into there. Big squeeze. Bit of the glue residues come out between, which is good, because then I'll give it a few seconds and give it a wipe. like that. Maybe we shouldn't have gone too high up saying that. Just because that's for where it attaches to the model itself. Yeah that goes on well so it doesn't matter which way around you do it. Okay so that's done and then hopefully give that a nice little smudge. That's good as well. Great. So that's a big old hand, a rippy hand. And I need another bit for no. Yeah, now I might be a bit beardy here and I might decide not to put that on as well. Cars, I could probably paint that really well with it not being on the model. Hmm. Yeah, I might glue that on later as well then. But I'll trim it off now and get it ready to go. Um, I don't know the 
with a, I'm not sure which bronze or brass I'll be using yet, but I'll have a little play a bit close to the time. I might re-listen to my Cabanda video and remind myself how I did his. I did want that to look really old and beaten. I think that was unbreakable brass armor. No, not brass, bronze. Brass is a bit golden. I think that's what I use for the trim. So yeah, we're going for bronze. Some of these are made with mica, dra yeah, mica dragons as well, or not? <laughs> Aha, with mica dragon teeth. Okay, so this has only got two layers of teeth, and Cabanda's has three. Still looks brutal though. Oh, yes. Squeeze that in, give that a rub. Hmm, I'm quite tempted. Hmm, that one there looks good up there. Oh, I'll try my technique again. A lazy technique. Give it a few seconds, then wipe it off. Hopefully that's created enough of a seal to hide it. I might need to green stuff fill it. Yeah, I wonder if they actually do any of the gear falcon jet bikes for the custodes in the end. That'd be great to see if they're doing a bunch of other plastic kits. Those jet bikes are just beautiful. I've got three of them in the cupboard ready to be painted. So I want to get around to them soon. Custode Army's been taking a bit of a uh, back step for the moment with all these items, but really looking forward to getting back to them sometime soon. The thing is, they are very strong as well in uh, the new edition of. Yeah, the new edition of Horus Heresy. So we will see. Nice. Yeah, so they are, they're not exactly the most challenging army to fight with. There we go. So that's a lovely piece as well. So I'm going to try to do that with bronze, probably in the recesses. There may be brass on the top bits. Now, as with uh, as with old Cavanda, I did do a lot of I did put a lot of blood on him as well, splatterings up and down. I think this one might be the same sort of thing. Should I glue that one now or not? Yeah, why not? I don't think that's going to affect it too much. One less thing to get my fingerprints on as well. Okay, that's good enough. <clears throat> Big old squeeze. Lovely. So let's see how that fits on. And do we make the decision of gluing that on as well or not? And that arm's meant to be going across him like that. So hopefully, yeah, that goes there. That's, that needs to go on after the wings go on. As before, I think it's going to be better to do that later. My glue on just before the oil buff stage. So I can get the grime in that recess there in the corner. Bam. Nice. Alright, as before, I'm going to keep the cables off until a bit later, I think. So next part is... 64 and 65. Nope, 64, 62 and 63. I can't remember 
I don't think these, yeah, the, I can't remember the names of these weapons actually. I'm trying to work out whether they, they've been named actually on the, yes they have. They've been named on Warhammer Community already. So I'll have to Google that in a second. So he's not got Gore Child or Gore Father anymore. 64 is coming off. Oh, this one's got an extra gate on here as well. Just there on the cheek. And 63. So it's not on this one. Ordered weapons chained to his fists, just like the gladiators, or well, gladiatorial um, legionnaires in his legion. Yeah, my um, my blood angel captain I've chosen is going to be Nasir Amit. Is it Nasir Amit? Yeah, Nasir Amit, the flesh terror. So hopefully one day they release a model of him. He's a bit of a big character in the old uh, Blood Angels. But I've also managed to get hold of some transfers designed to have the Flesh Terror symbol on in gold. So they're all the, uh, that's, that's going to be on his, every single one of the Blood Angels knee pads like they have in the artwork. I think that the, uh, what's it called, the actual, what's the word for it? Yeah, the transfers which actually come with uh, from Forge World themselves, they all have a have just three different lead or well, different company markings on there. So unfortunately, none of them were Nasir Amits. So I thought, well, that's what I'm gonna do. And he also strikes me as a bit more of a kind of he's I think he's a bit of a less arty Blood Angel as well, more of the art of war. Kind of goes with the old flesh terrors sort of persona in 40k as well so i'm not going to be going mad on ornamentation on my legio they're going to look a bit more uh, just a bit more haggard than the prim and proper beautiful blood angels that are out there so i am building a, a grim dark blood angel army and those jet bikes are right up my street I did have to get some of those um, special helmets uh, for the Blood Angels because they're actually really nice. But instead of just reserving them for a veteran squad, I've just decided to drop one or two in each squad across the line. Just add a bit of variation in. So it's like, oh yeah, that guy likes decorating his helmet. That one doesn't. So you've got to make the most of the nice pretty things like that when they come out. I don't know if I need to sand there because I think that's going to be obstructed by that. <sighs> okay, next bit then. Big glue. Now, where's it go up to? There. So. Bit along there. That's good enough there. Yeah, that's good. And hopefully, does that nicely. And Brilliant. 
So let's see how that arm joins. Once again, I think I'm going to paint that separately. Just be easier. So I put that to one side, and then we're on to the next page. So I'm still holding back the cables. And wow, more pages. So, aha. Now, regarding that gorget, well, not gorget, the hood, that bit there. That might be another bit I have to do later as well because I stick it on at this stage and don't know if I had to put my arms and what they call the uh, the wings on. So let's have a peek, see if it does work or not. Otherwise, I could happily keep this off as well because we more access to the top of um, Angron's head. All those cables and stuff. So that can go on like so. Now where does that fit? Feels like it goes there. Yeah, there's not really much Not really much contact. Yeah, it feels like it locks in there nicely. Now, with the wings, let's see if they fit or not. Okay, I think it might be all right. Oh yeah, that goes there, doesn't it? Yeah, so that goes on nicely like that. So that doesn't, doesn't obstruct the hood. or doesn't prevent the hood from being put on. Let's check the other side. Still locked in place, yep. Yeah. Now it is. And yep, that still goes on well as well. Great. So yeah, I can glue that bit on quite happily, which I think is what I'm gonna do next. Probably gonna hold off from putting the that big bit up there on, because I think that might be just a bit too difficult to get around with some of our techniques and the oil buffing. I'll use a thicker, I'll use two different oil buffs on this model, I believe. I might use some AK Interactive Streaking Grime on the actual skin, because uh, it's a bit thinner, especially if you use one of those Vortex mixers. And then after that, I believe I'll be using a bit of a ruddy mixture, which will be a mixture of oil paints and white spirits, to make a very nice armour paste, to hopefully there we go. Yeah, to make this bronze look really dark and archaic. That's that bit done. What are those two grooves there for then? Ah, that's for the breastplate when that goes on. Okay, so I'll leave that there for a second. And then clip and trim this bit out, which is what I have just done. So, got all these little rivulets which go into there. It's a bit of a shame. It uh, really is going to be covering up a lot of detail on his chest. But, okay. And this bit will go over the top to there. And it merges in lovely. So I'll be gluing that on in a second. 
Yeah, there's not really much red for him then, if that's the case. Most of it's going to be hidden. I wonder if you could leave it and just have this bit on instead. I'm not saying I want to, but... I guess you could. It's a bit of a cowl. And go a bit bare-chested, but... Nah. Now I'll put that on. It does look pretty good. Okay, I've been looking at the model and I think it's not really much point in holding it back and actually put it on later. So I'm gonna put it on now. So bit of glue there and there. Because uh, the pectorials are indented on there. And then we go straight into it. So Bam. So I should still have to get enough paint to these muscles here. I'm sure they've got names. Those ones down there is six pack. Up there. So a nice big squeeze. And that's set. And then the hood. Oh. That is something on this. There you go. Bun. Right, so the hood. Goes on nicely there. And I don't think it's going to get too in the way for all the stuff underneath. Let's have a look at the box. Mm. Could be worth putting that on later. So I think I will. Because I've got all that detail in there to do, and I'm sure I'm going to need to get some of that red done nicely. I think from that angle it might not be feasible. So yeah, I'll leave that up as well. It's starting to get a lot of stuff left off him at this point. Okay, then on to the next bit. So obviously there's a bunch of cables which haven't, well, which won't be glued on at this point either. So I'm going to start off with the shoulder pads, which are 72, 73 and 74, including the Taruges. It looks like they're not going to get too in the way of actually doing the bronze either, so I will be putting 72, 73 and 74 on at the same time. So that's that there. Looking forward to actually seeing if there's any sort of um, nods, you know, to the actual armour he's got in the... Well, the armour he's got from the Horus Heresy... Uh, Primark's range. So I think the he does have a high collar. What is it collar? The thing at the back of his neck. Head housing. Yeah, he has a high one of them, just like he does in this. Which is pretty good. So I'm wondering if there's anything else like little symbols here and there which is actually been you know, taken from one to the other as well. I wonder if there is. So it'd be quite nice to compare them both at the end. I know there's a lot of comments saying that Angwin you know, has the um, yeah, the resin model is actually one of the smallest Primarchs in the range. As he looks here though, he does look quite small as well. So I'm wondering if it is that is the case that he was actually meant to be one of the smallest ones. And here we go, on to the next bit. Nice. Scrape there. And there. I think we can all hope that one day in our lifetime there will be a Horace Heresy movie. Or like an HBO series. That would just be amazing. For some reason, I don't know why, I always, whenever I uh, picture Angra, I always picture Tom Hardy. I think he played the role really well. Excellent. Right, then the glue. 
So that goes over like that. And let's dry fit it first because it does look a bit strange. That goes in like that. Brilliant. Like so. Can you fit in one place? Which is great. And there it is. Another bit to go to the side, and that would definitely go on at a later time as well, because there's no point in putting that on at this point. And it'd be a lot easier and more effective to not. Straight to the next bit. One, two, three and four. Looking forward to seeing Fulgrim eventually as well. Got to bring him back, surely. The artwork for him is pretty good, but I still think um, I think the Games Workshop designers will really make it their own. Turn him into a really scary looking beast. Screaming. Uh, do you want him screaming? You know, a bit of despair or... Prefer him looking a bit smug. I think smug's probably the best way to epitomise him. Alright, what's over here? One, two. around there, yep, that's all fine. And then on to this one. Oh, I love assembling kits. First got into it when I was um, yeah, a kid. My granddad, he used to uh, have a shed at the end of the garden. And every time I used to arrive, I'd disappear down the garden and had a look, see what he was doing. He'd always be in there, and he'd always be, um, he'd always be assembling something or painting something. It was always Airfix kits, which was great. So I really got into models and planes since him. So I'd always walk out every single day with a new Airfix kit, a new plane. Sometimes he'd paint things for me, be like, here you go, take that. Here you go, have this. That was always, yeah, always made me really, really happy, that did. And uh, I remember when I first, well, first got into Warhammer back in the day when um, we were at preschool. <laughs> Not preschool, I say. Um, after school club. And they actually had like a bit of a Dungeons and Dragons and model club going on. You know, trim 71 and 70. Um, yeah, and I remember seeing a Space Marine, I think, for the first time. When I went around my mate's house and we played Space, well, I saw them playing Space Crusade on the table. And just like that, I was just completely hooked. I was like, wow, that is amazing. That is exactly what I want to get involved with. So I watched them for a little while, playing Space Hulk and Adeptus Titanicus as well. And that's one of the first games I actually got involved with, it was Adeptus Titanicus. And I must have been the age of, I think I was still at. Still at primary school. I must have been like 10, something like that. So, yeah, luckily he was such a kind guy, they'd actually lend me his, you know, his Adeptus Titanicus game, Space Hulk, and then eventually I managed to get some of my own. It's great. The RTB01 and the, um, the old lead. Obviously, I, actually, I've got Space Hulk as well, but I've got the lead. Um, the lead terminators and that orange box with the yeah blood angel artwork yeah green box with the blood angel artwork you know set against the forest i think it was and they were great all all wrapped up in um uh, yeah polystyrene containers those little trays like back in the day 
So yeah, I got all them, started gluing them up, went round to my granddad's house. And uh, yeah, he, I chose the Space Wolf Legion as the one I wanted to do. And he painted a yellow stripe down the center of every single one of their helmets for me, because I was just too worried to do it. And they were perfect. Yeah, it was great they were. And I had that lovely old paint box, which I think just had like the highlight color of Space Wolf Grey in it, not the actual shadow gray color. So my guys were very, very, very cyan. Yeah, it was adorable. I just couldn't understand how mine looked completely different to everyone else's. All the ones in the White Dwarf magazines. It's like, how are mine so light? I used the paint which had Space Wolf Grey. So then I started, um, I thought it'd be quite clever to actually do back highlights. I, I thought to myself, what I can do is I'll edge highlight with Shadow Grey. This is obviously me being a naive kid. And um, yeah, it didn't obviously work at all. So they ended up eventually getting repainted as something else before they disappeared and uh, got sold on as obviously they brought out more and more lead models like the Grey Hunters and the like which I did actually paint in Shadow Grey in the end which I was very pleased with myself there we go okay now I think just in here it's going to be a bit difficult to sand Yeah, just slightly difficult. <laughs> and that's that. So I won't put that on just yet, and I won't put that on just yet either, because that's uh, around his neck. And that's gonna go on top. So I'll paint them both separately as well. I think at this point, the last bits I've got to do, apart from all the wires, which will be dotted around everywhere, is the base. So there we go. All right, so here we go. That piece there goes over there, and this bit here, be going on top of it and I think it's like that. Oh, that fits nicely. All right so a bit of glue along there. This police helicopter flies by in the background. Very good fit. And then this piece. Where does that go? So that's at the back. And then that. Goes like that. Okay, nice and easy. Right 
make sure it's all level. Great. Right, I'll leave that to one side for now. And I think, apart from, yeah, apart from, oh, got those six, seven, and eight. Okay, so they're all trimmed now. And shock horror, we have one issue for anyone who wants to use this as a Horus Heresy thing. The good thing is you can just leave it off the base, turn it around. So we'll see what I can do with that. I might just put a bit of a rock in front of it. Drill it out, more skulls, why not? So, where is that big old rock gone? There it is. So we need to glue this bit to there somehow. According to that. I honestly can't see where that goes. Oh, is it there? No. Nope. No idea. According to that, it just slots in somewhere, so I might put that on later, same as the other ones. And leave this chappy off. Because I want to be able to use this in heresy. Oh no, look, there's another one. So I'll be lopping that off as well. Don't think there's any others kicking around on the base. Orc skull, but no. Yeah, let's cut that face off right now. And I'll just fill that with some green stuff. All right, so we have now assembled every part of the model. So it's on to the painting. So join us for part two.